these are some of, it's not an all-inclusive list, but it's the, probably one of the most important lists of our problem soils. The take-home message is you start seeing some of these soils, a little bit of a red flag should be going off. A little bit of a, right in PID or PANED, there should be some little hackles coming up saying, whoa, I might have to do something slightly different in these soils. Our decomposed granites, of course, have very poor shear strength. Why is that? No cohesion, uh, very little clay, uh, a lot of silt in it, and a lot of granular material. I want to talk about the DG, the decomposed granite that I'm familiar with, not necessarily the granites of the Sierras, but some of the worst DGs are the, the magma chamber. You picture the magma chamber there in the Bowen's reaction series, how the magma chamber begins to cool and the different minerals form and they crystallize. In some of these chambers, there's a whole lot of mica and biotite minerals. These are little flat minerals and they, maybe when you have more than 15, 17, 20% mica minerals, a mica mineral is like a phone book that I throw in the bathtub, it exfoliates. So if this granite has a lot of those minerals in it, it becomes exposed to water, it exfoliates. So that's, that could have a ring with a hammer. You hit that cut slope, it could ring with a hammer, but exposed to water and it keeps flaking off. That's the bad DG. And it's got a lot of, a lot of silts in it and stuff. No cohesion. Compacts really well. And it grows good veg, believe it or not. But poor shear strength. Serpentine exhibits fractures. It's got calcium magnesium uh, imbalances, difficult to grow some vegetation. What are the clay, a lot of clay in the serpentine? Seep springs. Seep springs, metamorphosed. Uh, it, it happens to be our uh, state rock, right? <laughs> but it's also a cause of most of our landslides and problems like that. So serpentine, you're gonna have some problems when you get into that. Highway 20, you know, Lake County and stuff. Sandstone, a lot of friability. Again, uh, there's not gonna be a lot of cohesion when it breaks up. It's gonna be sandy soils, droughty, difficult to vegetate. Sand again, high infiltration, poor shear strength, of course. So how are you going to hold those sands together? How do you hold them together? How would you get them to have water holding capacity? How would you get them to hold nutrients and stuff? Any ideas? What could you add to sand? Compost, organic matter, organic matter. Brent will talk about adding clay to it. You add a little bit of clay and uh, silt, no plasticity or cohesion. Silt floats. It, uh, boy, that's gonna be a big sign of our turbidity also, the, co the, the silty. S and then the clay soils are really good. They're plastic, they have cohesion, but they're gonna have problems with rooting depth, water infiltration. And when they do erode, getting that uh, clay out of suspension is going to be a nightmare. And it's been a nightmare for us in many Lincoln Bypass and other areas where they brought in all sorts of treatment uh, facilities for treating the, with chemicals and flocculants and stuff. That's got a whole slew of its own problems. So those are our problem soils there. Uh, this is, happens to be one of the decomposed granites up there on Buckhorn. And the only reason that seep is visible right there is because we had three really wet years. Otherwise, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see that. You know, you, you, you have a tendency of going, oh, they should have identified that. The geotech should have been able to put uh, horizontal drains in. Well, we've had geologists up there, and they can't find any. This is a perched water table because of a lot of rainfall from that. But when you start seeing that, you should know I'm going to have some troubles here because there is no cohesion. As the water jumps out through the slope, what does it do? It takes soil with it, sapping. Sapping and then it's going to landslide, all right? That's a, gonna be a big problem. This is a, uh, a sandstone soil down, on, uh, down in Irvine or down in Orange County near the coast. Sandstone covered by a marine clay material and then there's boron problems. Vegetation's gonna be a problem with that. Uh, D DG, decomposed granite, just throw this in. This is 3,000 foot elevation. It's south facing. It's got seven months with no rain, 100 and some degrees all summer long. 
and on that slope are willows growing. Imagine that, Salix species up there. But fortunately, maintenance never went up there and oversteepened that. That slope is now at its angle of repose. Decomposed granite has an angle of repose at two to one. Given no inputs of excess water, it'll stand there for quite a while. Very key. Angle of repose happens to be two to one for DG. Here's a global instability. This is Highway 101, uh, Confusion Hill. Been such a problem with Caltrans, just transportation in the North State in general. You're just isolated up in Eureka that finally Caltrans abandoned that highway and brought it over the other side of the Eel River. I had to build two bridges to do it. But uh, that's global instability. And this is serpentine. That would be a very local sort of instability, just rills and stuff forming in that ugly serpentine soils. Very difficult to vegetate. What's causing this problem here? Should give you a, be a head scratcher for us. No, no, what? no grass. What do you what do you see here? What what kind of failure is that? There's no control. Run on. Okay, so right away. Now, now is run on coming all the way over the top, or is there run on or seepage coming out of there? These are the questions we have to ask. I don't, I don't know the answers. It, I think it's interesting that there's a home pad up there and a probably a parking lot and probably a place that concentrates water, maybe a, maybe a, a septic tank. Uh, why is there no problem over here or over here? But I don't, we don't see rills forming all the way. So is it seepage? Is it overland flow? Challenges. Also, where there is seepage and water flowing through the slopes, uh, fiber rolls can exacerbate the problem because they hold water on those slopes. So be careful. The fiber rolls are not going to be the panacea that we might think they are. Again, too much water is obviously the problem here. You want water to run, run off of that or get off of it. Now we have different kinds of slope challenges. Of course, we have slumps, debris slides, rotational landslides, translational debris slides, satur shallow saturated translational slides, which we see in the DG a lot. There's no shear strength in those soils. They get saturated down to six inches. That six inches liquefies and moves through. A lot of times what happens on these DGs is the water comes through the slope, as we mentioned, and it saturates a zone there which liquefies and slumps out. Then that oversteepens this part and this slump marches up and you look at it and you think it's a gully. It's not a gully at all. It's caused by seepage. It's a geotechnical, a shallow geotechnical failure. So we can't treat it like we do erosion. You, you, we misnamed it as a gully. And there's the water coming out of the DGs and the water coming out of the DGs there. It's not flowing over the slope. It's flowing out of the face of it. Uh, Again, slumping on a highway. This is a, what, a one and a half to one. Typical kind of highway slope. I'm sorry, but we have creeks down there at the bottom, and we have to widen the highway or build a bigger snow area, snow plow area, and these slopes are going to end up steeper. So here's another uh, type of slump on a highway. Again, uh, steeper than an angle of repose, one and a half to one probably. So. Right away, I've already told you angle of repose twice. You should be thinking, oh, that's a, that's a real factor. That's not just an arbitrary two to one or one to one. Angle of repose is a real thing. Uh, here's one, one and a half to one, same kind of thing, rain on snow event. Uh, a foot of snow, 10 inches of rain before any vegetation got established. Uh, 1991, and it turned into, had to be $350,000 go back out to construction. Just FYI, on the little sliver fill, 1991, right next to it, when we built that slope up, these are 300 feet long. When we built it up, we put brush layering in. And we didn't know much about brush layering. We just followed some old Caltrans specs. And that slope did not need to be rebuilt. I'll show you a picture of it. Here's uh, surface slips. Again, talk about snow, snow and rain, and uh, pulling the the treatments down on this, right, Brent? We pulled, blankets were put down, or actually a, a duff and a topsoil was put on top of this, which is a really good practice. 
But if you put uh, two different dissimilar soil types, like a duff or a topsoil on top of a different soil, one of them is going to get saturated differentially. And then those things, if they're steep enough, it's going to drag it right off and, and cause it to fail. So your topsoil, your duffs, or your other things have to be incorporated and bonded together. We think that the reason this did not fail right here by the culvert, by the down drain, is probably workers put in the, the drain, and by working and walking, they probably embedded the topsoil and the duff into the soil. Uh, angle of repose, you know, uh, angle of friction. You all know that you take a dump truck of granular material or sand and you dump it and they form different angles of repose. We know that's how we determine different volcanoes, by the angle of, of their repose. So it's, it's where you, you dump the granular material and it's stable. It's repose. It, it likes it there. So we took a, uh, uh, at, at one class, a, a guy was teaching geotechnical and took a, on a table like this, took a couple of piles of sand, granular sand, started building a cone of sand and started building it up. And as he got partway up on one of them, he left it level and he put a, a layer of toilet paper on it. And then he continued to build up the cone. And this one he built up without the toilet paper. I'm talking about Egypt, right? This is the, the pharaohs. And then he started adding weight to these. And it wasn't long before he added much weight, and this one failed. And the one with the toilet paper, they kept adding more and more weight, and it didn't fail. That's reinforced soil. Moral of the story is if you're going to go steeper than your angle of repose, why not reinforce the soils? That takes away the need for a retaining wall all the time, a very costly retaining wall. A reinforcement, it doesn't have to be toilet paper. It could be geogrid. It could be geogrid and coir netting for fish and game and, uh, and the environmental concerns. We're going to get into that. So uh, sand dry is a two to one. Sand wet, you get sand wet. What does it do? It, you know, it pooches, pooches down, right? Uh, and then water filled, sand just turns to quicksand. So sand uh, dry has an angle of repose of two to one. Shale about two to one. Clay, dry, clumpy clay, about two to one. That's why two to one seems to be this kind of stable thing that people will talk about. Well, it's because it's, it's dry granular material, though. And uh, clay wet excavated, you get clay wet enough, and then it's going gonna, it's gonna to pooch out. And the decomposed granite, yep, two to one. Here's some Granitic materials in Norway laying at their angle of repose, as long as no more water comes on those, they will stand there very stable. What happens with the decomposed granite or any soil that sits there on its angle of repose long enough, it's not disturbed, not going to wash away. Pretty soon uh, pine needles, leaves, organic matter, deer poop is going to land on there. Pretty soon the organisms are going to come in after some years. They're going to start building a soil mantle. Water infiltration rates are going to increase. Water holding capacity as that organic matter gets in is going to increase. Rooting depth is going to increase. And pretty soon natural succession is going to occur. 